Hello, a quick couple of things before we jump into the video. Firstly, I know it's been a while since my last upload. I've been in the hospital basically every day because of family reasons and also I have uni most weekdays, so I've been really busy with that. But hopefully this little video will bring some enjoyment to you guys. Secondly, if you're wondering what this is, essentially I was elbowed in the chin by someone during basketball and I had to get stitches and miss swimming. So a really annoying affair in total, but just in case you're staring at this the whole video wondering what it is, that's what it is. So I hope your weeks are going well and please enjoy this video. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Darren, a second year med student studying at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. This year I feel like I've really built some regularity and structure into how I study and I'm kind of doing the same thing every week. Whereas in year one I felt like I was kind of waiting in the deep end and would kind of change how I study every week. Um, but this year, because I have some more structure, I would really like to share with you guys how I study because I feel like it's really working. And a big part of how to study is of course the apps I use. So I use five main apps, I think, in total when I looked at them, and I use them for a variety of different reasons. And the main takeaway I'd like you guys to get out of this video is to use different apps for different purposes. Like, don't get bogged down in one app. Don't feel like you need to have a central database. And also, like, of course, apps support your learning. Like, just because you have a great app doesn't mean you're going to be smart. Uh, but anyway, these apps are arranged in order of importance in this video. So I'll explain a bit behind that. The reason I'm arranging the apps in importance is purely because I felt like it and I thought it'd make the video more interesting for me to make and maybe for you guys to watch as well. The way I thought about it was that if I had to have one app, which one would I have? And that's how I structured the order of this video. The app that I considered was the most important in my studying is Anki. That's a pretty stereotypical answer for a med student and if you have someone who's doing, if you know someone who's doing med, very likely that they're using Anki. The way it works very briefly is that it's like an online flashcard system. You have a front, you have the front of the flashcard where you have your questions, you try and answer it first and then you flip it and you see the answers that you wrote. Then you rank the difficulty of how hard it was for you to obtain the answer and then Anki tests you hours or days afterwards um, depending on how hard you found the card. Now the reason I really like Anki is because it's a very organized way of um, of arranging all my information. So I don't take notes really in med school, like I don't have a database, I don't take notes on each lecture. I just think of questions and put them into Anki and I feel like I can arrange it really well by weeks and by subjects in my Anki. And the other thing I really like about it is that I don't really need to think about when to begin my revision or when to revise earlier week's content. So there's a lot of content in med and it, it if you don't revise it at the start, obviously you're gonna be very behind by the time exams roll around. But it's also a really difficult job to think about when should I revise week one content? Should I do it week three, week five, week seven? And so Anki kind of does all that thinking for you, um, which I find is very helpful. Now, one thing I'd like to say is that I don't use Anki blindly. I kind of did in year one where you think, okay, I just shove every single card possible in there and then I just spam it every day and then it will just stick into my brain. That's a really clunky way of using Anki and also a really tiring way as well. Um, I think the best way to use it is to have a few cards, like not as many, try and cut down to as many, as little cards as you can, uh, but make those the really important ones. And so that way you will go over the really important content very often um, and you'll also be more motivated to do it as well because you don't sit there with like 500 cards to do a day. And I would like to say that the use of Anki is supported by the other apps I use and also just me writing down stuff um, because I really make sure I understand stuff before I put it into my Anki card. Like if there's a really long um, flow, for example, we're learning about how Heme becomes Billy Verdon and Billy Rubin, like I don't just shove the whole process into an Anki card. I really sit there and try and think about this, goes to this, goes to this, um, and it combines with this to become this. I write it down really clearly first, and then I put it into my Anki card. So I make sure I have some sort of understanding in my head to begin with, um, because I don't think Anki is really good for really complicated stuff, um, because you'll just get really mad at the app and at yourself. For me personally, I use Anki most days. I try to do it every day, but I miss days. I think my main problem that I've identified is that I have too many cards, so I am in that process of cutting down my cards so that I can actually finish my daily review every day.
The app I consider to be the second most important in my studying is Notability. I've used Notability ever since like year seven, and recently they've changed it to a subscribe app, which means you've got to pay like every year, I think, so it's a little bit annoying. But I like it for the same reason as Anki in that it's really, really well organized. I can really, I, well I do, I arrange it by subjects and then the weeks, so week one, week two, week three, and then within those weeks I uh, arrange it even further by what particular activity. For example, anatomy, we have dissection, tutorial, imaging, and specimens, so I sometimes I have different categories for each of those depending on whether I wanted to write something special about them. Now as I said before, I don't really have a, well I don't have a centralized notes base, which is why Notability isn't more important than Anki for me. What I do for Notability is for lectures, which we watch at home, I sometimes have a, a notes open and I just sometimes draw out things when I find that I don't understand what the lecturer is saying. I'm not going to refer to those things again. If I forget, I'm just going to draw it out again. It's just for my, uh, for my understanding in the moment and then I plop it onto the Anki card to retest my understanding on that app rather than Notability. Now the second thing I use Notability for is in workshops and classes, sometimes we have to take notes or um, annotate slides that they've given to us beforehand and I feel like it, the Notability is really easy for that because I can download the slides, write on them um, straight on and also because uh, I can you know, take notes in a very free manner. If we're looking at uh, the disease and then we're talking about the symptoms, I can just draw like an arrow out symptoms and then branch out to the different symptoms. So that's why I really enjoy Notability. A very classic comparison is between Notability and GoodNotes, and my very expert opinion is that I've never ever used GoodNotes and I haven't had any problems with Notability, which is why I use Notability. Alright, from here on out, I'm probably going to talk less and less about the apps because they're less important for me, but my third most important app is Notion. Once again, I don't have a centralized note space, which a lot of people base on Notion, so it will probably be more important for them. For me, all I use Notion for is to arrange my learning objectives. So for each lecture we watch, we have learning objectives, and for me on Notion, I have sort of semester one, then I have my subjects, then I have my weeks, and which lectures are there, and if I click on the lectures, then I see the learning objectives for that lecture. I'll probably go over these later in the semester, I'm not using them yet, but I, once again, find Notion a very organized way of having those learning objectives. You can also make it really aesthetic as well. My Notion is very, very not aesthetic, so please don't like roast me too hard for it. I find it functional and helpful for me. The second really important thing I use Notion for is for a subject called clinical skills. In clinical skills, we learn how to assess a patient who has come into the GP clinic or the hospital, and we ask them different questions depending on whether we suspect that they have a heart problem, a brain problem, a gastrointestinal problem, and also we have different investigations we perform as well, uh, different examinations we perform as well, in terms of what we try and palpate, and what we listen to, and all that jazz. So I found Notion a really, really good way of writing all that down, because this is stuff I'm going to be using once I've graduated, and Notion was a really good way of every time I learn a new system, I add the questions, I add the examinations onto that big list, and I find Notion very accessible as well. So whenever I forget something, I just go into Notion, click, 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 and then I see the whole list, and it's set up really, really nicely for me to review. The important thing here is that I'm very flexible with how I use Notion. So I use it for like one particular aspect of a particular subject, plus learning objectives, which seems like two really random combinations, but I felt like Notion was the best platform for them, and so I went out and did it. I didn't really force myself to be uniform with my note-taking apps. The app I thought was the second least important or the fourth most important, depending on how you look at it, is the Notes app. Basically, I use the Notes app to write my to-do lists. If I have a really long period of studying, for example, a couple hours uh, or like even a whole day, then I would just write down all the things I wanted to do and try and achieve those things. So Notes is just really easy to open, that's why I use it. And I guess writing it down really clarifies to me what I need to get done and also um, helps me not to forget as well. The app I deem to be the least important is an app called Concepts. Don't get me wrong, Concepts is a good app and fun to use, which is why it's even on the list in the first place, but its function can just be replaced by like paper or even notability kinda. And the reason I use this app is because I saw Archie use it a lot in his streams, and so I thought I'd try it out, and it's pretty fun. Essentially it's like an open canvas, 
in the sense that there are no boundaries to the page and I really like using it for sketching things. So in medicine, I've sketched, I've sketched out arterial supplies, which is the main thing I've used it for, and particularly for the new arteries we've been learning in the abdomen. And I found it really useful for doing that and just doing a bit here and then doing it here and then, you know, I'm moving the page so I don't see what I've drawn and then trying to draw it out again. And I found it just a really enjoyable process. You kind of feel like an artist as well because there are a lot of tools there and it's just a fun and novel way of drawing it, um, which makes it a bit more entertaining than just drawing it out on plain paper. But, you know, not that important, which is why it's number five on the list. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I had a bit of fun making it because it's a little different and it's about the apps that I use. Last year, I really tried to use Notion as my central database, but it didn't really cut it for me, maybe because I'm just not as good at using the app as a lot of other people. But this year, the more flexible approach is enjoyable and doing decently as well. What's your setup? I'd be really keen to hear in the comments below. And the main takeaway I'd like you guys to have for this video is, as I said at the start, to try different strategies, be very flexible with your studying, and use different apps for different things. Don't feel like you need a Wikipedia database of all your information because it might not be enjoyable and it might not be effective. I hope your academia is going well and I hope your lives outside of school are enjoyable as well. And I look forward to seeing you all next time.